Welcome to How To Cook That, I'm Ann Reardon and today I am attempting to invent an easier way to make 3D face cakes. If you remember a couple of months back I sculpted my first ever head out of modelling chocolate and it took days to make and I still wasn't happy with it at the end. Well I had an idea the other day that I thought might make the process easier. There are a lot of face cake fails out there so I think bakers like me need a cheat or an easier way to make it happen. Don't get me wrong, life-size realistic face cakes will still in my opinion be the hardest type of cake to make but I think this trick will make it a little bit easier. Step one, recruit a willing volunteer with a face shape somewhat similar to the person that you want to make. This is my lovely son, Matthew. Tip some bags of icing sugar into a big container, lots of icing sugar, and then when you're ready, three, two, one, you want them to put their face straight down into the icing sugar and then come straight back up. <laughs> oh, it's my nose. <laughs> I reckon we've got an okay imprint there. There's quite a bit of loose bits that fell off as you came up, but we'll see if this works. Thanks, Matthew. Now you can see here, this is a pretty good face shape mold. I'm not sure if you can see, but right here in the center of the nose, there's quite a bit of loose icing sugar. I'm not sure if this will work, but I'm just gonna try and suction it out with a pipette. Yeah, that's not really helping. So <laughs> let's just use it as it is. Now I'm gonna pour in some melted white compound chocolate. You can use real chocolate if you want to, just make sure you temper it. And then we just need to wait for that to set, which is gonna take a little while because it's quite thick. The moment of truth. Let's pull it out. That looks pretty terrible. <laughs> but there is a thick layer of icing sugar caked onto it, so you never know, it might be okay. I wonder if running it under cold water will get that off. Uh, it's not coming off. I can't use hot water because that will melt the chocolate as well as melting the icing sugar and that will ruin the face if there even is a face. If I give it some encouragement with a spoon, it seems to be coming off. So I'll just keep working on that. 10 minutes later and there's just little bits of icing sugar left and they seem to be coming off fairly easily. This has given a pretty good basic face shape but his nose is wrong. It's kind of squished or squashed as he put his face into the icing sugar. Now you can tell from the chin there that he was sticking his head forward as he put it in and his lips are a bit flatter than they are in real life, but I think we can work with that. It gives us a starting point. The first thing I need to do is a bit of plastic surgery to this squashed nose, just take off that flattened bit and then make a couple of nostrils. Now we can obviously build up with the modeling chocolate, but it's gonna be hard to go down. So anything that shouldn't be there, we need to take out now. I don't have another tub of modeling chocolate, I'm just gonna be honest with you. So I am literally smashing up the rock, sorry Dwayne, don't take it personally, so that I can use that modeling chocolate to make Prince Harry. Now, if we look at the side profile, then we can decide what needs building up. And to turn Matt into Prince Harry, I need to add more to his nose and to the brow area there. Because Matt's lips were flattened while he put it in the icing sugar, I'm just gonna add a little bit on top of them as well. And then roll out the rest of the modeling chocolate and add that over the top. I warmed up my modeling chocolate in the microwave just to make it easier to mix it into a smooth, even color and get a workable consistency. I'm surprised, but mashed rock actually makes a perfect skin tone for Prince Harry. So if you wanna make this cake, just make the rock first and then <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do that. If you wanna know how to color fondant, I've got a whole video on how to do that. The same coloring will apply to modeling chocolate. Cut around where the eye is. Having a firm piece of chocolate underneath actually makes this super easy. Remove that bit of modeling chocolate and do that on the other eye too. 
and now add a tiny ball of white fondant and spread it out to cover the eye area. He looks kind of creepy now. Now Prince Harry is older than Matthew, so he has a bit more skin coming down under his brow here, so I'll just add that. This is a bit like face app, making a young face older. He's also rocking a moustache, so we need to add an extra bit of volume for that. Now, I know this is skin tone and his moustache isn't this color, but we'll color it later. It'll be easier that way. We just need to get the shape right. Just add a bit of texture along there so that it's not smooth, so it doesn't look like his skin. And now for his beard. Just a really thin layer of modeling chocolate on top. Smooth that on on the edges and then texturize that too. So you've got the lines going down in the direction that the hair goes. For those of you who didn't watch the rock video, this is modeling chocolate, not fondant, and it's heaps easier to work with because you've got more time to carve into it or sculpt with it. Fondant forms a dry skin quite quickly, so it isn't very easy to work with for something like this. Add some texture to those eyebrows as well. And now let's paint the eyes. I'm just using gel food coloring mixed with a little bit of water for this. And I'm gonna completely paint the colored circle bit of the eye. Let that dry a little bit and then add a circle of black into the center for the pupil. Now to color his hair. Red hair is really hard because basically in every picture of Harry, his hair looks different. When he's outside mainly in the bright light, it looks bright orange. And in others, it looks nearly completely like a dull brown. So I'm just doing like a mixture of colors. It probably should be more browny than I'm doing, but I'm going a little bit more orangey. Anyway, we'll just see how it turns out. And don't forget to add some color to his eyebrows too. His lips are like a browny pink. Don't make guys' lips too pink unless you want it to look like they're wearing lipstick. If you look at photos of Harry, his skin is quite red on his nose and a little bit blushed on his cheeks. So I'm just using a dry paintbrush just to dab on some powdered food color to add those skin tones and that little bit of variation. I'm also gonna dust a bit of gray around the eye area just to sort of deepen the look of that there. Now, of course, this is just the front of his face because to be honest, I wasn't actually sure if my icing sugar mold idea was gonna actually work or not. So it did work, which is great, but now we have to turn this into a head. But it's only my second head I've ever made, so I'm sure you guys will forgive me for that. If you want to know how to make the chocolate Cheerio central support that I've got here, you're gonna have to go back and watch the rock video. I've flattened this on one side and I'm just gonna pour white chocolate over the top and then add his face on top of that. Tip some marshmallows into a bowl and you want to microwave them until they're melted and then tip in some rice bubbles and stir that around until you have this yummy sticky mixture. Add that onto the head to just build up the shape and to stop this sticking to your hands, you're gonna to need to dampen your hands, otherwise it's literally gonna to stick to you. And <laughs> just make it the shape that you want it to be. That's not really quite the right head shape, but it's gonna to have to do for today. While that sets, I'm gonna make up a few trays of my moist orange almond and berry cake. All the recipe details for this are on the howtocookthat.net website for you. I'll link to that below. And I like to sprinkle the frozen berries over the top of the cake batter rather than mixing them through. And that way they don't get squashed. Okay, back to his head. Dave thinks it looks like his brain is sticking out the back of his head. I'm just gonna use a little bit more white chocolate to fill any holes that are there and to smooth it out a bit so we don't end up with a really lumpy head. Once that's set, I can add more modeling chocolate to cover it, and I'm gonna add that in strips just to make it easier to handle. Just press along the join where it meets the face. We need ears, of course. Now, I really should look at a picture of an ear because I can't quite remember what they look like apart from weird when you really look at them. And I know this is not quite right, but it's the best you're gonna get today because it's getting kind of late. Add a strip for where his beard meets his hair and conveniently covers the face join and blend that in a bit and texturize it. I'm running short on modeling chocolate, so I'm gonna to have to swap and start using fondant for his hair. 
See how this is drying out already because it's fondant? I only just put it on and it's already hard to shape. It's already starting to crumble, so I can't do much to shape that front bit. So I'm gonna to have to add one little section at a time and texturize it rather than adding it all at once. I'm also gonna cut some little extra bits a little bit at a time and add those in for hairs that are sticking up a bit. Then use gel food coloring to add a bit more color variation to the hair and make it match the beard. Angle the head where you want it to be and build up the cake around it. I'm just layering that with an orange buttercream. Place the shoulder template in front of the cake and cut around the shape of the paper and then carve a little bit off the front of the shoulders to round them out so they're not quite so square and then you want to cover that in buttercream. Add a piece of fondant for the front of his shirt and then put another strip right down the middle there and add the collar around the neck. Cut a little circle and add a couple of little dots or little holes so it looks like a button and put that on. And then cut yourself a rectangle of black and kind of squish it, kind of fold it in the center and then wrap some extra black around the middle to make a bow tie. And we're gonna leave this flat on the baking paper to dry out. Now I need more black fondant and cake decorating stores are not open at this time of night. So I'm gonna get some sleep and come back to this tomorrow. Roll out some black fondant and chuck that over one shoulder trim it to size and then press down using the back of a knife where the shoulder seam is on a jacket. Then add a couple of little creases at the join to make it look more like fabric and a seam across the top of his shoulder. Use the template to cut and add the extra pieces of black to the jacket and then put on his bow tie. Fondant will stick to itself if you use just a tiny bit of water and hold it together for a second or two. His hair is a bit too orangey in my opinion. It should definitely be a bit more brown. Having a face mold to start from definitely made this process a lot, lot easier. I know he doesn't look like a perfect Prince Harry, but at least his face is symmetrical, it's in proportion, and he looks like a person. <laughs> I did see a video by one person who makes 3D realistic head cakes, and it takes him three weeks just to make the head. So if you don't have three weeks to spend on a cake, maybe give this idea of molding your face in icing sugar a go. <laughs> Subscribe to How To Cook That, turn on the bell and all that jazz, you know what to do. With many thanks to my patrons who make my crazy ideas like sticking your face in icing sugar come to life. Tastes like sugar. <laughs> and if you'd like to join them, head on over to patreon.com backslash h2ct. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you next Friday.